Let's fucking go, I'm back! Yes, sir! Um... Such like a less amount of people here, though, because... God damn, that was so annoying. I mean, nothing happened, there was nothing wrong.
Um, we're gonna wait a couple more minutes, probably. Hopefully, other people join. If not, we'll just start. Can't see who who's in chat. If you're in chat, say hi. Say hi, guys. Hi, chat. Please, please say hi. I don't know if there's a delay. I'm sure there's a delay. I can't see who who's in chat. If you're in chat, say hi. Say hi, guys. Hi, chat. Ew, it's funny skeleton. Yuck. This isn't the Roblox theme song, shut up. Dun 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 dun. Alright, I think we're just gonna start and hopefully other people join along the way. The video is very long. Gamers. Hi, Braven. Yo, no hable espanol? What do you mean? I'm speaking English. Si. <laughs> Oh well, whatever. Um, let's figure this out. Oh, perfect. You see this, right, guys? In the biggest social experiment yeah, ever yeah, yeah. done in Minecraft, right. I scattered one thousand one thousand players massive islands to simulate a realistic civilization. The players were given no help or guidance, and just like in real life, if you die, you remain dead forever. No. Now each Rip. player has the freedom to do whatever they want, gather resources, join a society, become a dictator, or if it comes down to it, go to war. With so many people on each island, anything That's true, happen. Charlie Kenny. I promise you one thing. This you just need like ended up having good, the most uh, entertaining story arc I've ever like seen. Think, yeah, like so you do not good want to miss this. To, for so pick a nation to root for and enjoy the video. I present to you the 1,000 player civilization experiment. Right. Back. Back to where we were. I mean, if you want to we were never here. This is the first live stream. Hey, look, it's me behind the and Discord course, server. Thing. Subscribe cool. to my channel. All right, everyone ready to be teleported? All right, we got Jump this. Let's go, ready. baby. <laughs> okay, here we go. How did I like Aruba? Aruba was great. It was okay. well, it was so okay. worth killing myself On for. One, Spoilers. All 1,000 players were teleported to their islands, each its own biome. We had plains, desert, snow, and jungle. This is huge. Most players spent the first day scouting their island, searching for a place to settle, but almost yeah, immediately uh, we started to see people dying. Ish events will Oddly, run like normal Minecraft, basically, island. unless there's like a ton of people, people together, to which death. usually there isn't. Stuck in powdered snow, which looks exactly like regular snow, but sucks you in like quicksand. <laughs> this guy's trying to free his friends. 
<laughs> oh no. Even worse for the poor people on the snow island, trees were almost nowhere to be seen. The desert island also had very few trees where players was needed funny to be wood. But the places where players did find trees quickly became extremely valuable hotspots for groups to set up. Opinions on Waluigi? Waluigi's well, awesome. You should be in Smash Bros. Crafting. They're making progress. Meanwhile, the people on the jungle island had essentially unlimited trees and were thus already thinking about other things. Alright, back to where we were. Okay. Take over the world. So Wazuk. Wazuk is a very is a character. He um I think Ish knows him out of event. And basically he was like trap pit cool. And then he did the trap pit. So he's he's, he's a pretty chill guy. Um Opinions on Kazington. Uh, he got a pieces of bread from Jesus. That was pretty cool of him. This is my right hand man, Darbo. Hello, right hand man, Darbo. Don't talk to him. <laughs> doesn't speak. While having a lot of trees did seem like an advantage at first, many jungle people found the island to be difficult to traverse, given the immense amount of trees and the hostile mobs that would spawn on the surface due to lack of sunlight. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> this fear of traveling also made it more difficult for jungle people to talk with each other since players could only read chat messages from people 100 blocks away from them or less. Although frankly, at least they didn't have to see what me and the admins were looking at. Rip global Lastly, chat. We get to the Plains Island the and Plains Island. boy was it different from the others. Yeah, Plains... It truly... Plains was extremely, extremely, uh easy uh they basically immediately were friends oh did darbo die they didn't show him after the. they actually did show him after the trap um i'll skip to it right now and then i'll go back but there he is at the end where the jungle people here i'll play the clip and so the jungle went back to hosting comedy shows and there he is. Look, he's hosting his comedy show, even though he doesn't speak. So Darbo does live. Oh, where were we? Here. A player named Horace Crown. Oh, Horace Crown. Horace Crown is a character. A lot of people didn't like him, but I, I actually never really talked to him during the event. I know, uh, even though Planes was all extremely happy with each other there was a lot of like internal like backstabbing talks to about people so like side falls group who's next talked a lot of shit about horace crown's group and horace crown's group talked a lot of shit about sad falls group our aim is building the most beautiful and nicest city on the entire server. And the second, also a democracy led by a player named Sidefall. I just want to make sure nobody dies. It was actually kind of odd how similar these two civilizations were. They were both located on the southern shore, they both had democratic elections, and their leaders both wanted good for their own people. I just hope nothing happens to change that. Ish, I'm gonna Thank make an you. Among Us character. Never mind, I hope they die. Soon it was the end of day one. Players across all four islands logged off and made plans for the following day. It was on day two when civilizations really began to thrive. In the southeast corner of the desert, what used to be an empty patch of grass oh, was turning into the desert's largest oh. nation. Hello, good sir. Yo, what's up, Ish? The salt on his back. You might recognize the player storming hell for my first civilization video where oh, he led a nation Sultanate. The Boo. Sultanate. Boo. Well, now, the desert dictator is back with the Sultanate 2.0, and this time with a population of over 100 people. I want to maintain order and peace in the desert. The rules as established by the Sultan included wear proper attire, do not eat pork, complete your mandatory work, and most importantly, acknowledge the Sultan as the supreme and divinely chosen leader. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in the actual event um people were killed if they broke any of those rules. Like, uh, I know people from 2E2G 
ate pork accidentally on the sultan's borders and like almost died for it <laughs> which is kind of funny but um yeah they were very strict and they definitely liked uh saying that they uh were bigger than everyone else and po more powerful Moving on, since it was still hard to get food in the dry climate, the people of the Sultanate focused on developing different types of food production, like fishing in the surrounding ocean. On top of this, a player named Drip Chicken made a chicken market. Drip Chicken, my boy. Um, I mean, in the actual event, he didn't, he wasn't that much of a prominent character. Like, his main thing, like, coming to, he wasn't with the farming regiment. He was just kind of around. He was actually very loyal to the Sultanate in the real event. I'm pretty sure. And he also died in the Battle of Aculon, but his character got a little changed. How did they know if he ate pork? Um, I'm pretty sure they just saw it. Like, someone saw it and then reported it. Although, when I checked it out myself, it turned out to be a very different type of market. Welcome to Los Pollos Hermanos. Thank you. Would you like uh, some Breaking Bad reference? Sugar? Anyway, we finally go back to the snow island. As I was flying around, I found what I can only describe as a British shrimp. Is the cold climate really the best place for a shrimp? I mean, depends. But look at my little friend over here, you know? <laughs> Wait, who's your friend? Underneath? Yeah, yeah, he's fully here. I, had, I have no <laughs> idea who this shrimp guy is. <laughs> he, I, 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 like, know of him. He was an event now. winner. But, like, he's I didn't know. No, I, I know a lot of people from, um... <laughs> Despite the killer powdered snow and the occasional polar bear... I know a lot of people from, uh, Snow loved him. Like, he was really funny. He's, like, a just, like, a nice dude. I, I did not hear about him until after the event ended. The people on the snow island were actually doing pretty well building settlements together. Nobody was fighting because everyone had one common enemy, the harsh Drip climate. Chicken is Walter that White. being said, it turned out that all of these snow settlements might be a bit more than just little communities. On day two, Rue was helpful. getting out about a conspiracy that, despite them all being spread out across the entire island, a lot of these snow settlements were actually all being run by one single person whose goal was to unify the entire snow island under one mighty empire. This person's name was Alanulo. I know all of the diehard Ish fans thought this was going to be Solev. <laughs> Um, but, okay, so, Alanilo never was in a bunker. He was always, he was just not on. He was, he always, he was always the leader of Aculon, but for the first five days of the event, his computer was broken, and he was, like, also on vacation or something, so he just wasn't able to get on to become the actual leader. And he was running this entire empire recruitment operation from an underground bunker where he felt he was safe for the time being. Essentially what he would do was hold meetings with people who were already leaders of their own settlements and convince them to merge their civilizations with his empire so they would be stronger together. He would give these leaders orders to fulfill and in exchange they would be guaranteed high ranking positions in the empire. It so, um, the second in command to Alanilo was not Turkey either, it was Ender. It's Ender. And then, at, under Ender was a set of, like, three people, and Turkey was one of those people. Um, was he the reason the Snow Island became the strongest? Yes, he unified the Snow Island pre-event. He, you know, like, uh, like what a, a lot of nations did. Everyone liked Alanilo, so they went to his nation if this empire actually succeeds in uniting all 300 people on the snow island it would easily become the most powerful nation in the world in fact it would be bigger than the sultanate and the two plains democracies combined will this ambitious plan actually succeed let's see what happens in the following days
We've now covered the politics of every island except for the jungle. So what's going on here? Well, quite frankly, I had no freaking idea. Honestly, ish, same. Had zero clue what was happening in the jungle. I knew that there was a desert trap. I knew that Seth was a leader, and that was basically it. It was chaos. There were about 30 different camps and tribes spread out across the entire island, and a lot of them were in constant fights with each other. Oh. <laughs> Who are the? What is going on? There's a fight here. Here's a tribe that imprisoned one of their own members. That's true, actually. In in the prison video, there is uh, <laughs> a scene of me executing Wazak for being, quote, too rich. I say we tax him and then let him out of jail. <laughs> well, damn boots, okay. take your shoes. So overall, there was chaos. Nobody trusted one another. And to add to this, nobody wanted to travel too far into the jungle because they were scared of rogue tribes and especially hostile mobs. In fact, we actually had to remove creepers on day three because they were killing too many people. Whoever asked. Now, there were actually two Rip tribes that were considered people the who most died influential in the jungle. The first, a river-based settlement called the Sea People, whose leader was killed almost immediately by a random Rip rogue the tribe. Big no. The new leader, Yeet Speak, dedicated his rule to maintaining order, but also to keeping his people happy by setting up events like stand-up comedy nights. I got a few jokes about unemployed people. Oh wait, none of them work. The second influential tribe was located in the dead center Don't know anything of the jungle, about the sea people. and it was what appeared to be a faction revolving I know around the worship of a Seth, player Seth's named dope. Seth. Hello, Mr. Seth. Oh, what's up, bro? Oh, this is just creepy. You're telling me this isn't a personality cult? Nah, I wouldn't say that. It's a way of life, all right? It's a religion. <laughs> Lastly, as I was flying around, I happened to run into this guy again. I'm gonna take over the world. Believe it or not, he had actually become the leader of a pretty impressive settlement. Granted, there there was a lot of internal drama in his tribe. Do you see this uh, like really cool tower thing that we're building here? Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's really it cool. Right here. And, and do you see our farm over there? Uh -huh. It looks really so cool and nice. Now come over here. <laughs> Could you tell us what this is? In short, two of Wazik's tribe members built a librarian's tower, and he thought it was ugly and wanted to burn it down. Now, when I talked to the librarians, they said Wazik just doesn't like the library because he's illiterate. As I said, um, drama. Oh, Wazik now, may be illiterate. Wasn't the only place I have no idea. Problems. The Plains Island was seeing both a surge in development, this whole place is awesome, but also a rise in tension. The leader of one of the Plains democracies, Horace Crown, had found out that the other Plains nation run by Sidefall had reached out to the Snow Island looking for potential alliances. Horace Crown did not like that Sidefall was reaching out to other islands instead of reaching out to him, so he quickly established his own alliance with two other Plains settlements, both located on the east side of the island, which would essentially cut off Sidefall's access to most of Plains if a war were to break out. I guess this is true. I'm not really sure about any of the Plains stuff. I just know that they like had tensions within each other. I know Sidefall. Their peaceful lives for granted. Sidefall was more of the international guy, and then I think I guess Horace Crown wanted to be internal i'm not exactly sure if that's true or not but i'm sure it is we're getting very worried about a potential massive war that would devastate their homes here in kfc we want family not war meanwhile on the desert island the sultan storming hell was not happy when he discovered that a group of mountaineers had made their home on the mountains surrounding the sultanate so the two groups had a meeting to discuss this dispute over land why does the sultanate have any more right to a plot of land simply might makes right we're strong so if it comes down to it, maybe stronger group win. People in the desert were starting to get worried about Storming Hell's tyrannical nature, so some of them moved to a quickly growing democratic nation on the other Yo, side it's of me. the island. This was Theria, the name derived from the Greek word for freedom. I asked their Love elected Theria. president, Saps, about the Sultanate. Hopefully we can establish some peaceful relations for now. I mean, we're in the middle of a desert. Why fight, you know? Overall, each island had its own conflict. Uh, so, I mean, that's basically why we formed Theria, uh, to be, like, the freedom opposed to the Sultanate's theocracy. But it wasn't established on day three. Theria was always a thing from day one. So we were always our own group of people. 
conflict between the desert's sultan dominance, the plains' alliance disaster, the jungle's total chaos, and the snow empire's takeover, at least one of these conflicts was bound to erupt very soon. And that conflict was planes. At the beginning of day four, a propagandist told everyone that Sidefall was about to attack the Plains Island. Horus Crown called a code red and everyone the Plains was freaking out, including these guys at the center of the Plains Island who built a tavern on a lake. Love the tavern. The bartender. Goated the tavern. tavern. I hope you can enjoy a nice beer since it might be our last. <laughs> So at this point, you're probably wondering, what was Sidefall actually doing? Well, it turns out Sidefall was just as confused as everyone else since he had no plans to attack anyone. The propagandist had lied. I have no clue what these guys are talking about. I don't want to attack anyone. I don't want a civil war. You were framed. I can't believe it. So now, both sides were gearing up for a war over nothing but a miscommunication. And all throughout, Sidefall was desperately trying to reach out to the other plane's leader saying that he didn't want war the other oh, leaders gee, doubted these apps yeah it's me hi goose to meet with him as long as they met on neutral ground so this all happened um told you guys i think they were about to have a civil that war that. and then While they talked Horus Crown literally just undercover figured it out in the tavern and, and then became a full alliance it was like crazy had someone else place a bunch of tnt under his village the, the, the diplomacy was insane far. in the plans Folks, we have a peace deal. By the thinnest of margins, crisis was averted. After talking, the leaders had made a peace treaty. I actually didn't get to see much of the meeting, but here's essentially what happened. Sidefall first apologized to the other planes leaders for not being open with them, specifically oh, well, 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 well. relationship with the Snow Island. He told them he had only reached out to Snow in hopes to get on the good side of a player named A Freakin' Turkey. I don't think that's true. Alanulo's second in command. The he is not Alanulo's second in command. Man, I don't think Sidefall reached out to Turkey. I think he reached out to the actual second in command, which was Ender. I think. I I don't really know. Turkey was the temperer, which means temporary emperor emperor of the Aculan Empire, because both Ender and Alanula were both offline for like the first four or five days. So they needed like a third in command to lead the people while the nation was being built. Very weird scenario and very unlucky for both Ender and Al Alanya that they, they couldn't play the first half of the event. But oh well. Plains leaders discussed their disagreements on foreign relations. Horus Crown preferring keeping alliances within planes, and Sidefall believing in making allies on other islands. But they were able to put their differences aside. They banished the propagandist from the planes island. I don't know what and happened to Drink Top. The, the four major planes nations created a great planes alliance. The planes island went from being on the brink of war to being the most united island of all. And it wasn't just planes. Toward the end of the day, all four islands were prospering. From the people on snow collecting resources and building together, to the people in the desert working on the Sultan's build Among project, us. which was to create a massive holy city. Even the, the Sultan's was build, build project was for, insane. The jungle people were just desert builds were alive. really good. Soon though, it was the next day. But before we let people back onto the server, the admins and I decided to add a little something. We added a fifth island in the center of the world, and we didn't tell the players that we did this. We wanted to see who would discover the island. I don't think they added it find, on day five. I next. think they just had it there we the entire time, the but players weren't allowed to leave their again. island until day seven. But meanwhile, we have to talk about the Snow Island. Hello, hey. Turkey. Hello, Itch. How's it going? <laughs> On day five, the player A Freakin' Turkey finally gave me a full explanation of the mysterious Snow Empire, which I found out was named the Aculon Empire. Still fearing for his kind safety, of a w. the Empire's founder, Alanulo, gave orders entirely from his secret underground bunker. While no, the second in there's command, no bunker. A freaking turkey carried out his orders and led the people on the ground. That's kind of what happened. I mean, Alanulo wasn't 
able to log on because he didn't have a computer. So he told like Turkey and other people to what to do, and then they instructed everyone what to do. I'm pretty sure that's the real story. You guys have settlements across the entire island. There is a lot. Uh, just know none of it was made by slaves. The empire relied on strict order to maintain peace. It's now 200 citizens were each assigned a daily job like building, mining, or fighting. And whenever they were online, all citizens were required to be in two Discord voice channels at once. That's the biggest nerd emoji thing I've ever heard when I like learned about this. Like, holy shit. Two Discords at once? Jesus Christ, these guys were crazy. And they had like a bunch of spreadsheets as well. Even know it's possible. It was like also, insane. The Aculon Empire made it a point to document everything, including its list of members, its hierarchies, its physical landmarks. But what I found most impressive was the high level operation going on in this seemingly regular building. Boreal! This singular building is the richest place in the entire Love server. Boreal. They called this the Quartermaster's House. And Quartermasters were awesome. Empire not only collected and stored all its resources, but also distributed items using a complex request system. System, where, for example, a citizen asks for iron ingots, and then the quartermasters decide exactly how much iron that citizen deserves based on a detailed algorithm they developed. <laughs> Has anyone tried breaking into this place? Uh, not yet. Let's just say, if you tried to get in without permission, you're not gonna get a very nice welcome. And I kid you not, just a few minutes later, this player, Xelius, was caught trying to sneak his Based way in, Zellius. and he was sentenced to a public execution to be held the next day. Things are kind of strict around here, huh? But as long as they don't take me my squid, I'm a happy man. I'm very lucky. <laughs> The Snow Island continued to be hyper vigilant about criminals, but so were other nations, like the Desert Sultanate, which made an inescapable prison. He is surrounded by lava. Or Wazak's nation in the jungle, which made a giant sand trap. Uh, oh, this uh, is evil. Just you wait until we have a nice little deliberation with something. Yeah. I'm gonna be put to death, you know. Foreshadowing. <laughs> Even planes didn't feel exactly safe, as this self described capitalist nation made a giant wall to protect its people. We want to make sure that communists. Cannot take this Legit away. watch this but last night. Yeah, I'm reacting guys, to it. I got it. tipped off from someone in the desert that something big Trick was man. about to happen. Uh, the Sultanate Army's on the move. Oh, Sultanate's on the move. The Sultan had sent his elite squad on a secret nighttime mission. Their goal? To find a group of people that had been rumored to want to assassinate the Sultan. They're at the north side of the island now. Hmm. Oh yeah, okay, this is our target, this is our target. Okay, let's go, let's go. According to the Sultan, the people hiding in this little settlement were indeed the attempted assassins, and now the group had a decision to make. Oh, we're gonna is kill this, this guy. Do you think I was good? Do I think it was good or bad during it? Um... Will this be the breaking point? I think I was... I was an anti-hero. I think I was both good and bad. Because I had good ideals, but I did it in a bad way. you make plans to kill me, Justice will come for you. The Sultan's elite squad spent the rest of the night raiding the settlements, but during their chase of another suspected assassin, they ran literally into a major dilemma. We well, you know he is running to Syria. The guy they were trying to kill was running toward the democratic nation of Theria to get asylum there. The Sultan is really about to roll uh -oh. up Theria. Holy. This could cause a major conflict? But the Sultan's army didn't care. They barged into Theria and searched every single house to find this one person who ultimately ended up getting away. Meanwhile, the people of Theria were freaked out by the raid, but when they looked to their leader Saps for guidance, he was nowhere to be seen. He had fled. Okay, so I didn't flee. <laughs> um, I was at dinner <laughs> when this happened. I missed 30 minutes of the event this day, and just missed them invading the area. Um, yeah, I would have probably protected the guy and probably did something about that, but I just wasn't online. I were I was bad to the emirate. Um, not really bad to the emirate. That emirate video that EJK9000 made um, is pretty biased. Uh, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that made me, like, the way EJK depicted it made me look a lot worse than I actually was. Uh, like, a lot of the Sultanate, um, things that they did, like, they, um, their alliance with Theria that they tried to make, uh, their 
they said that Theria wasn't allowed to talk to any foreign nations and that the Sultanate had the final say in everything. And so obviously Theria wouldn't like that uh, deal. And like also the Sultanate killed innocent people on multiple occasions. So like that, both of those things weren't in the EJK video. So it made Theria look like the bad guys times 10. Even though it was more like a gray area, and like both Theria and the Sultanate were like good and bad, was this free to play or did you have to act? Um, this is free. Uh, we we all chose what to do. There was no acting until after, and it wasn't like acting whole story points out. It was all embellished off of the what actually happened in the event. Do you think he deserved to be executed? Um, the Sultan? Yeah, I think the Sultan it deserved, the Sultan deserved to die. Eventually, the Sultanate's army left, but Theria was not going to forget this. I didn't forget it. To blow up the quartermaster Joe Field was elected betrayed yeah. our people and for this he must die glory to Acula it was a busy day for a freaking turkey the execution was successful but the Empire didn't yet have a written constitution or a justice system so a freaking turkey met with a player who claimed to be a lawyer to set up a legal system you get the smaller seat unfortunately but do know it is quite important as well I'm used to cramming into tight spaces afterward a freaking turkey took his guard to drew and confronted some farmers who he claimed weren't producing enough food for the Empire I I Turkey's swear, awesome. I will not miss any payment I have to owe you. Drew, the bow, please. <laughs> I expect five stacks of bread delivered within one to two business days. Even though Classic. he was a little tyrannical at times, a freaking turkey was actually becoming very well liked in the Aculon Empire because he got things done and he was a charismatic speaker. Fellow citizens, it is my distinct honor to pronounce Steve and Pixel as husband and wife. See, even though he was only the second in command of the Snow's Aculon Empire, many people were starting to view a freaking Turkey as a better candidate for leader than Alanulo, since most people in the Empire had never even seen Alanulo, given that he's been hiding underground the entire time, afraid of being assassinated. In fact, some of his own citizens weren't even sure he existed. While so, I mean, that that's not true, obviously. All, all of his citizens knew he existed. <laughs> um... It, they, it just Alanulo couldn't log on. Alanulo. <laughs> oh, Aya, what they do? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Pixel and Steve were doing a little something crazy at the end of their wedding. Opinion on 2E2G. Love 2E2G. They are awesome people, and they hated Theria a lot, but I think they're cool, so they had a pretty cool build, and uh, we used them uh, for the assassination plot. Oopsie. Ruled from afar, only talking with high-ranking officials. A freaking turkey was considered a man of the people, someone who talks to everyone. In fact, a freaking turkey had gained so much notoriety that leaders of other nations were starting to reach out to him for alliances rather than to Alanulo. So as a result of all of this, Alanulo was starting to get a little worried. Turkey knows that I Why created they this you? empire and its entire um, political system. Yeah. And as long as I am alive, I will be its only ruler. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> our, our monkey religion, we hold fast to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching the full video. Did things in the video were fake? No. Not a lot of the things, a, mo I think 100% of the things in the video happened to some regard, but they were embellished for the story. Us, this small group had made a monkey religion. Are you gonna watch the full video? Yeah, I'm watching the full video. The biggest 
tree in the entire world. The We're small but industrious. While everyone else is fighting and killing each other, we are peacefully building. By now, every tribe in the jungle seems to have its own goal. These guys are building a tree. This group, called the Blue Cross, provided food and shelter to refugees. Meanwhile, Wazak's goal, which was still to take, take over, over the, the world, world, was seemingly driving him mad, especially after the librarians built a second tower. <laughs> you did this out of spite, didn't you? Yeah. Well, no. Well, yeah. Overall, it seemed like there was a lot on Wazik's mind, as if he was planning something. Something big. <laughs> Meanwhile, Seth and the Sea People were still the two biggest uh, and then it was really jungle, cool. And both pursued very innovative political strategies. For example, they also hated Seth Theria. Got married, but only so he could parade around the jungle but and demand uh, they finished the Sultan Bills. They were cool. And you know what? It freaking worked. The Sea People, on the other hand, had taken on a massive goal, which was to finally end the chaos in the jungle. And they did this by sending out stealth groups and hunting down thieves, murderers, and anyone who they claimed did wrong. However, some of the supposed wrongdoers they killed were actually allies of Seth. In response, Seth demanded that the Sea People stop their initiative immediately, but the Sea People plans to continue. All of a sudden, the Jungle Island was on the verge of a massive war, as if there wasn't enough chaos already. Goofy uh, jungle music. Wait, is someone actually here? Whoa, man. <laughs> On day seven, a player named the Pokey Monkey discovered this all happened. Secret fifth I think he was island. the first one. The island had a mysterious dead terrain, a small pre-built village in the center, and underground, it contained netherite, which is the strongest and rarest resource in the world. Now, Pokemonkey was a part of Sidefall's nation in Plains, and he quickly alerted Sidefall about the very strange and unexpected discovery he'd just made. He's taking the blue lantern so people will leave him. Guys, I'm not lying, there really is an island! <laughs> Two minutes later, another person found the center island, this time someone from the jungle. Then, like a domino effect, more and more people started arriving, typically either alone or in small groups, like these guys from the desert. Even though they all oh, I think these, I don't even know who these guys are. They could have been from my nation, from Theria. They also could have been probably from the Sultanate. All came from different islands and nations. Nobody was fighting. In fact, they seemed to be forming friendships and simply admiring this new mystery. Yeah, I'm adding a ton of content. Yeah, I'm just amazing. explaining Quickly, things. I don't know. Across the world Thanks, that There was a fifth island, and about 30 minutes into day seven, basically everyone knew. It was crazy how fast everyone found out. Now, some nations were hesitant. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone knew of the Dead Island beforehand, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, because it was just like, it was just like a thing. Everyone just knew that there was a fifth island, but they, we just didn't know where it was. So I think at, like when the borders dropped on day seven, everyone was just like, all right, we're all just going to go there. See what, see what's up. Why didn't they like Theria? Um, probably because of the assassination plot. If this was another civilization video made by another content creator, motherfuckers would kill each other as soon as they arrived. Oh, absolutely. There would have been a giant war over the dead island. Citizens about visiting, believing that the island was some sort of trap, while other nations like the Aculon Empire sent out large exploratory groups to investigate the island. So Aculon is here, but instead of mining for netherite, they're taking the wool from the tents. Oh, they don't have sheep in the snow island. That makes sense. Something I found interesting was that no nation, not even the Snow Empire, had the courage to publicly claim the center island as part of their nation. Yeah, it as explains their that territory. this is what his secret Probably intention was to would start a war. A conflict with other nations, which was my secret intention when adding the yeah, island, that it, it would cause some type of war. But it it's... didn't cause a war. Or maybe just... Yeah, I mean, um, not a lot of people... I think, I think Pandarus actually tried to claim it in the actual event. They just were like, oh no, this is Pandarus 2. Pandarus is 
Horus Crowns Nation in planes. Yeah, they were like, oh, yeah, no, this is ours now. But And, and then no one really, like, took it seriously, I'm pretty sure. Meanwhile, I present to you the story of Los Pollos Hermanos. Wow. If you didn't commit suicide, what would you do during the world war at the end? Would you declare war? Yeah, we would have fought uh, Aculon. The same thing happened, basically. Because we're democracy in Aculon's tyranny, you know, we gotta rid the world of tyranny. Oh, you've really expanded your business. Yeah, we're doing quite well. Because starvation OMG, was such that a big problem from in the no, desert, that's not Drip me. Chicken had made it his life's mission to feed the people of the desert. And ever since I spoke with him on day two next to his little food stand, Los Pollos Hermanos had become a staple of the Sultanate. But this business would soon run into some problems. What? See, on days four and five, the Sultan Storming Hell was unsatisfied with the slow progress on his build project, the Holy City. So he demanded that the farmers of the Sultanate stop growing food and instead work on his build project. And just like that... I'm pretty sure um, this isn't the actual reason why. I don't think it, they forced them to build instead. They just didn't... Like, the Sultan just didn't... Um, give the farmers diamond armor and like diamond tools and stuff they're just like oh all the only thing you can do is farm like you don't need diamond stuff and so they got like angry and then they came to me and then left the food supply going into Los Pollos Hermanos had completely stopped. The restaurant suddenly had no food available. Did you even to mention sell. me day three? No, I didn't. Having no food, day, uh, drip chicken was F eleven stole a piece of bread from the Sultanate and then became kill on sight, and then we harbored him in Theria, and he became a Therian citizen. Which is it was very weird that four pieces of bread was like they like were willing to kill him over that, but whatever. Had forced to sell some Classic questionable Sultanate. products, and if he was caught selling these products by either the Sultan or the Sultan's twin guards, he would probably receive a life sentence in the Sultanate prison. Meanwhile, the farmers of the Sultanate were unhappy since they wanted to farm, not be forced to build. So, in a the Sultanate had the power of Mr. Beast five, gaming winners on their side. Yes, but I the secretly had them on my side. Set up a meeting with Saps, the leader of Theria. Oh, it's me. I know you want to move to Theria, but if you do, the Sultan will send his elite squad to hunt you down. So, what do we do? Go to planes or something. There's about to be chaos in the desert. And Saps was correct. There was about so to true. be chaos in the desert. Literally so true. For reasons he couldn't tell the farmers just Sultan yet. Sultan was hot though either way. I, I wouldn't me. say he was hot. You know who Davert is? Yeah, I think so. He's one of the twin guards, right? He's about to leave the Sultanate and join me. <laughs> really? The two... Uh, so, um, the real plot is that I didn't have just Davert on my side, I had both Davert and Zamta on my side, so the plan involved Davert leaving, but Zamta staying, but both of them were, were allied with me and not the Sultan. Two people the Sultan trusts the most are his two twin guards, the brothers Davrit and Zamta. But one of them had grown Betrayal. tired of the authoritarian and warmongering True. ways of the Sultan. So Davrit had reached out to the leader of Theria, and together they created the single craziest plan I have ever heard. And this My plan goes crazy. First, Davrit leaves the Sultanate to join Theria. Next, the Sultan finds out about the betrayal and sends his elite squad to kill Davrit. Then, when the elite squad is away hunting for Davrit and the Sultan is therefore alone, Davrit will sneak back into the Sultanate and kill the Sultan. Davrit will then claim leadership over the Sultanate and as the new leader, he will finally... Uh, the plan was never for him to become the leader. It was basically for the Sultanate to disband and then the desert to be unified under one, which would be probably me. If the Sultan didn't die, Aculon probably would have won. Oh, absolutely. The Sultanate and the Aculon would have probably allied and then wiped everyone. 
bring peace to the desert. Dapper, there is no way this works. Brother, grow some chest hair. Trust me, you'll work, all right? So at the end of day seven, Classic Dapper. Dapper snuck out of the Sultanate and headed to Theria to begin the operation, while Drip Chicken and the farmers fled to the Plains Island. On their way out, some of them took one final look back at their home, at their restaurant, knowing that they would probably never see it again, knowing that the story of Los Pollos Hermanos had come to an end. Rest in peace, Los Pollos. On day eight, there was a major event on the snow island. For the first time ever, Emperor Alanulo had come out from his underground bunker. He had summoned the entire Snow Island. Does it ba battle would have been Castle, way cooler? Oh, absolutely. So I'll get to that after the, uh, the desert finale. Before the coronation, all high ranking officials were required to provide Alanulo a gift. I present to you a high quality pair of premium brand sneakers. Thank you. Classic. I, Baron Saul Goodman, Rip give you place. this present, Lord Alonulo. My presence is your present. <laughs> After the gifts, Alonulo asked his second in command, a freaking turkey, to make a speech affirming Alonulo's undisputed leadership. My friends, the Aculon Empire is the strongest nation in the world. Not because of one leader, but because of all of us. Thank you, Turkey. At the end of the ceremony, Alanilo asked all of his citizens to follow him out of the castle, down the main path of the Empire. <laughs> Aguilan and Solovinia the same thing. Actually so true. The unity of the Snow Island. But this image of unity was only a mirage. There was a lot of discontent building within the Empire for many reasons. People didn't like that Alanilo's knights were constantly bossing them around, nor did they- Yeah, so the knights, <laughs> I think, were, were literally just bullies. They'd take people's diamond armor because they wanted a spare set. Um, they'd, like, take people's foods and stuff. Oh, there's <laughs> someone subs. Let's go! I didn't even know I had sub notifications. It's YouTube. Um, yeah, so the knights were very, like extreme bullies. So a lot of people just were like, "What? Uh, we don't like them." And but the knights were extremely loyal to Alanilo. Aculon builders like it when Alanilo forced them to work on the Aculon castle instead of letting them finish their own projects. There was this general sense that Alanilo might be overreaching with his power, especially when he started spying on his own citizens to see who yeah, was Yeah, Alanilo was very paranoid. Leadership. See, Alanilo believed that in order for his citizens to have a good life, they have to live in a strong nation, and the only way to maintain a the strong nation The entirety of the knights chasing me at the end of the war is so funny. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Leader. Kazington, or Funny Skeleton in the chat, he's kind of a goat. He was the Therian as guard. Well as the rising popularity of his second in command, a freak I also Turkey. taught him everything he knows. Just want to put that out Knowing there to all 13 of you guys. On, many of a freak and Turkey supporters were becoming scared living on the Snow Island, afraid that they would be executed for not supporting Alanilo's leadership. So, with the help the music of is so good in this video. Turkey, plus another high-ranking official, it's Ender. Yeah, Ender! Some Aculon citizens organized oh, here we secret go. evacuations out of the Snow Island through underground tunnels, some of which led to Seth's nation in the jungle, others going to Sidefall's nation in planes. Both so, um, I think this happened, but it was also mostly jungle because um, Ender made the Bastion of Peace, uh, which was never named. It was basically the Aculon Defectors. That's, I think, what Ish calls them. That was basically who they were. Um, the, it was Ender, Bernie, Soggy, all unnamed people besides Ender. And all Aculon defectors because of the tyranny of Aculon. They allied with Sidefall, allied with me, allied with Seth. And that's basically what formed the allies at the end. They should have rena renamed Aculon to El Bozo Empire after the gang. 
Uh, yeah, it should have been the El Bozo Empire. Dude, it's crazy how little I actually knew of stuff happening before it actually happened. Yeah, I mean, I, as a leader, I knew a lot of the stuff as it happened. Like, because I, I talked to Sidefall, like, every day after the event. Same with, like, Ender and Seth. I was, like, in group chats and stuff. I talked to the Sultan every day and, like, tried to, like, get peace. And then at the end just was like, you know what, screw you guys. Um, I talked to Alanilo and Aculon. I talked to higher up Aculon people for potential alliances there. And that was bit, like, I talked to a lot of people. Uh, I know Jophiel talked to Horace Crown and Pandarus in the plains as well after I died. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, like, um, communication between higher ups in uh, each nation. Seth and Sidevall were very open to accepting refugees, especially those who opposed Alanilo, someone who they believed to be a dangerous tyrant. Also, they had just found out that Alanilo had actually sent spies all across the world, including into their own nations, so they didn't like him very much. We're not going back until there's some form of democracy in snow. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Meanwhile, in planes, Mr. Turkey. That Are sounds so animals? stressful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Season two was so, so stressful, but it was so fun to play in. Yeah, I don't think I, I don't know if I want to be a leader next time. It's a lot of pressure for sure. No, no, no. I do not want a revolution. I just want to make sure Alanula doesn't kill these people. When are you going back to the snow island? Probably tomorrow, because I'm going to try and host a meeting with Alanula. I just think he's gone too far. So while a freak in Turkey stayed on the Plains Island for the rest of the day, Seth and Sidefall created the first ever multi-island treaty. This treaty not only established Seth and Sidefall as allies, but it also declared their nations refugee states, ones that are willing to accept all people fleeing from dictatorial he's doing another regimes, when? regimes like um, the Sultanates or the... Unsure, no one knows as when... He's doing it. Position in the Empire, Probably soon though. He was it's it's hard to be with it. Yeah, it's, command, yeah, it's hard. But it was only a matter of time before Alanilo finds out about the missing citizens. So much and politics and diplomacy goes be behind the scenes. His position, or be kicked out of the Snow Island entirely and become a refugee himself. Yeah, I don't know if... <laughs> Wait, is that a basketball court? <laughs> On day eight, the center island was getting a lot of visits from curious players, and instead of fighting each other, everyone was just kind of hanging out and doing their own thing. <laughs> what is this? Still an kind of a goat. B, Mr. B-Man, of course. Later that night, some adventurers started terraforming the dead Kanuki. terrain, making Love Kanuki. it green. This actually looks not bad. Are you in Ish's upcoming 1,000 players Simon Says video? I was in it. Um, I didn't get too far in it because of a certain reason uh, where a quarter of the people all died at the same time. But, you know, whatever. Uh, it was, Simon Says video was recorded a, a while ago. It's, it's not, um, it's not happening soon. It already happened. It's just going to make the video about Simon Says Soon, I think. Church, and they hosted many ceremonies and cultural events. What type of ritual is this? Now, I actually attended two churches. On yeah, it already age. happened. The second one inside I think the next one may be a Hunger Games one. Don't, by the person uh, sitting next to me. Don't uh, quote me on that, though. It happened months ago? Yeah, it happened a while ago. Right away to leak his <laughs> Whoa, what did I do? <laughs> They're taking him away. <laughs> oh no. Later that night, the Plains Island received an unexpected visit from the Aculon Empire's state-sponsored journalist. I'm with the news. <laughs> Down with the news. <laughs> go away, tabloids. Go away. No false news today. They're kicking out the journalists. <laughs> oh my God. Meanwhile, I ran into these plains farmers who literally did nothing but plant wheat. The Valley of Wheat was everywhere. so funny. That's oh what they're called. God. The Valley of Wheat, I think. Now, right next uh, to the wheat these field, players were so, 
they just literally planted wheat the entire time, nation, kind of which based. took the wheat and made a variety of baked goods. See, ever since the Great Plains Alliance was signed on day four, the people of Plains believed their island to be, for the most part, a very safe place to live. AKA, the Plains was extremely by or extremely bored. Everyone was so bored in Plains after the alliance was made because nothing happened. That's why no one liked being in Plains. Everyone in Plains wanted to go to other places, which is why you see a lot of Plains people going to other places like Sidefall, going to the jungle to meet Seth because nothing was happening. It was boring. And as a result, many players felt secure enough to run their own businesses. There was the bakery, an outback steakhouse, boating and kayak, and KFC! KFCs. Yes, sir! And there was the most recent addition, Los Pollos Hermanos. You made one in the plains biome? Yes. Oh, you don't like alliances? I think they're fine, but it's a little annoying. The Sultanate farmers received citizenship in Sidefall's like nation, war. That's where fair. they were able to rebuild their famous restaurants, and the people of Plains welcomed the refugees with open arms. The only person who wasn't happy was the owner of KFC, who now had competition. Anyway, when word got out in the desert that Drip Chicken and the farmers had fled the Sultanate as did Daverit, many loyalists in the Sultanate were furious with these betrayals. While the Sultanate was still the second most powerful nation in the world, the first being Aculon, these betrayals of the Sultanate hurt the Sultan's public image, and he feared... Yeah, um, the Sultan's public image was always extremely negative. Even other, like, the EJK video makes him out to be some really awesome guy. Most people in the desert feared him or just straight up didn't like him. Uh, it was never, like, oh, he's cool. I mean, he's a really chill guy out of game, obviously, but he was, he was tyrannical in game. Very, like, pushed ideals and, like, pushed the smaller nations around being seen as weak by the world and, and I guess the Davert leaving also made him so uh, look weak as well elite squad out into the desert to try to find and kill both Davert and drip chicken but um I don't think they tried to kill drip chicken because he's in plans saps was the first ish video you were in the prison video no I was in the island video but I, I didn't play a role in it because I died very early. Instead of staying home in the Sultanate, this time the Sultan traveled with his elite squad. This threw a wrench into Davrit's assassination plan. My assassination Davert plan. No Not Davrit. Hiding under Both of ours, but mostly mine. He saw an opportunity to strike. I don't know Meanwhile, why he says Davrit. Of Theria, Saps was extremely worried because I was he extremely knew worried that the fate of his nation and his people so true. rested on this assassination. This attempt. is very if true. If it succeeds and the Sultan is killed, well, then all is well. All but true. If it fails. It will only be a matter of time before the Sultan finds out that Saps was behind the plan, and then there is no doubt that the Sultan will seek revenge and absolutely obliterate Theria, That's real. killing not just Saps, but all his people who, by the way, were entirely innocent. Saps purposefully didn't tell any of his citizens that he was involved in an assassination plot. Uh, that's true as well. Mo like. 99% of the people that I ruled or I was a president of 99% of Therians didn't know about Daverit coming didn't know about my ties with the Amazon and Zamta and all of that and didn't know that I was trying to assassinate the Sultanate until basically it was too late to stop it because they definitely wouldn't approve of something that puts them in such Oopsie danger. poopsie. All of this Maybe I was a little was a bit of a bad guy, but it was for the greater good. People, like this group, which made a giant lava wall. These guys are so isolationist. The, they wanted I, I don't remember whether they're a homestead, the I think, the desert, was these and lava wall people. they were paranoid about everything. The walls keep us safe. We can't leave you didn't even tell his own so damn guard. I didn't tell you. <laughs> My bad. On outside is not safe. They're strangers. We shouldn't trust them. Oh, by I, way, I had to keep it a secret, Cass. Here. Okay. <laughs> I actually think this group was more of a cult than a civilization, but still. These guys are crazy. They, the right they would, like, immediately try and kill you if you went near their uh, little base. Go back to the jungle war. 
I say war because both major nations had already basically decided that they cannot coexist in the jungle. Seth was mad at the sea people for killing many of his allies, while the sea people were mad because Seth wouldn't let them kill those who they believed to be criminals. Neither nation was willing to compromise on this, so war seemed inevitable. However, because Seth had also recently formed an alliance with Sidefall from Plains, a war between the two jungle nations would likely cause Sidefall, as well as the rest of the planes. Did Everton's on to L? No, they're not an L. They're cool. They're based. Actual <laughs> the jungle is literally Vietnam. War. Yeah. So given that the, the yeah, the jungle so is crazy. Now, both sides agreed to have one final meeting to maybe work things out. Um, so I'm pretty sure this was all fabricated to an extent. <laughs> I don't think they like I knew I know Seth Seth's nation knew about the uh pit trap because they were actually allied with Wazuk's nation. I think the pit trap was made for only sea people to die in. I don't know how many like what people actually got killed in them or not, but it was Seth like Seth for president of Mexico in 2248. Interesting. He was quite enthusiastic about hosting. On day eight, Seth and the Sea People sent their highest ranking officials to Wazik's nation, where the meeting would take place. All right, Seth, you're up first. I think um, the sea people are killing people for a lot of irrational reasons. So, you know, as an example, right? They had uh, five stacks of cookies taken from them. That takes okay. like three minutes to get, bro. And he's like, I don't think you should murder someone over there. We requested he give it back. That's like F11 no, so in a nutshell, okay, where he took like a piece that's of bread exactly and then what Seth just the said. Sultan I mean, yeah, was yeah, willing yeah, to kill him. Contact. It's like that's a person. Soon the argument began to escalate. And the people you attacked were direct allies. I'm sorry, but what other ways do we have to stop the chaos in the jungle? They stole. They didn't to be killed over it. Do you really want to go to war over this? Well, if you keep killing our people, then we won't just stand by and watch. All right, fine. The sea people declare war. All right, let's do it. But before a fight could begin, Wazik yelled, Double now! Jungle pitch up kind of crazy. Bum, 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 bum. This is crazy. Watching this in chat, everyone exploded. It was insane. Wazik had just killed seven people using his sand trap. Oh, wait. Look, look at this guy. Look at this guy right here. He lives. He would have killed eight people, but this guy survived. That that rat bastard. Before getting away. Bro could have killed both leaders. Um, yeah, he could have, but I don't think he wanted to kill Seth in the actual event. I think him and Seth were actually allied. ...to put their war on hold and declared a unified worldwide manhunt for Wazuk. Everyone this was didn't happen. I think he just, I think Wazuk fled the jungle after this, and he actually ended up stumbling into Theria. I have a plan to stop him. <laughs> really? How? Oh, you'll see, my friend. When Seth and the Sea People declared war on each other, that was Dr. Pickle. <laughs> that was Dr. Pickle. And make himself the villain, so that the entire jungle would make peace to unite against him. I'm not really sure if this was a thing. I don't think he. I don't think this was like a big brain strap by Wazak. Like, I think he was just like a harbor of chaos. For actually preventing a world war. A little silly. Wazik is now hiding underground. <laughs> After spending most of the previous day trying to hunt down his enemies, the Sultan Storming Hell decided to take a break from the hunt and attend a wedding hosted by a small neighboring desert nation. It was a Wait. huge honor to attend a wedding hosted by a small neighboring... You guys put your fucking flags down? I didn't even realize that. That's so funny. Sap just started Twitter. I think I have a Twitter. Desert I don't use it really, though. It was a huge honor in Did the they actually make the peace? No. No, they hated each other, always. There was no peace in the in the jungle. Civilization. So there was a lot of buzz surrounding the Sultan's visit, and everyone in the desert knew he would be there. 
Zamta the twin guard was also at the wedding, and he was quite thankful for the break since he secretly despised having to hunt for his own brother. When the Sultan demanded that Davert be tracked down and killed, Zamta was horrified by this order, but he kept silent fearing that he'd be next. So the actual plot is Zamta knew about this assassination plot. He knew that Davert was going to leave, and he was on my side the entire time. The plan goes as follows. Um, the original plan was what Ish said, but and then a player by the name of EJK exposed the plan via Discord, and so we had to switch the plan to the uh, to the what's it called to the wedding one, and the wedding one was for Davert to distract everyone in the wedding, and for Zamta to take the Sultan away and then kill him, which is what happened. But in the story, it's a little embellished. To make it better for a plot. And then, by then I had to kill myself for vacation, but we'll get to that. Zamta could only hope that Davrit was far away now. I feel like I just left, but like watching it and not never commenting, sorry. No, you don't have to comment, Davert you're all good, man. Not far away at all. It's just video is a big Breaking Bad reference. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Zamta and Davrit were those twins from Breaking Bad. There's the, those Poyos. It's all good, man. There's so many references. Because he was on a mission. This is all real. This is all the plan now. Davert comes in, distracts, hopefully doesn't die, which he doesn't in the actual event. We'll get there. How did he expose the assassination? EJK listened in on one of the Theria stages and recorded it, and it was just all a leaked Discord thing. Uh, it was bad, but also funny at the same time. I think he goes into it in his video. I think it's called the real desert story, even though it's a little biased and makes Daria look really bad. Still a fun video. Such an intense moment. Holy hell. Bro, how he got in? I don't know. I didn't make the Theria Discord. I think it was Joe Field had terrible perms. It was bad. Uh, he also was technically allianced with Theria, EJK, but he broke the alliance and was secretly allied with the Sultan at the entire time because he's cringe. <gasps> oh, <gasps> Davert! Bum, 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 bum. This is so God. intense. Oh. He's hit him so many times. Wait, Sorry's getting away? F. The elite team is on Davert big time. Oh. Oh! Oh, he's getting close! He's getting close! Oh, he turned around! Holy crap! Everyone's here! <laughs> this is insane! In the actual event, Davrit does not die. He escapes the mosh pit and flees by boat um but it was the mosh pit was enough for zamta to leave uh the the salt like leave with the sultan and then kill him that was like the whole thing but davert dies in the story for a, a more intense moment which is about to come up Rest in peace, me. So, I had to die. Uh, F's in the chat, obviously. But, why did I do this? That's the big question why everyone's asking. Said the most heartwarming thing after your death, Rip Bozo. Yes, a lot of the Sultanate people said Rip Bozo. I had to die in the actual event because I had to go on vacation to Aruba. That was the whole reason why I had to jump. Uh, it, it became somewhat part of the plan. 
the the assassination plan because it also saved Theria's ass because the Sultan it was only angry at me. So they didn't really feel the need to attack Theria after I died, which gave enough room for Zamta and Davrit to assassinate the Sultan and dismantle it. If I didn't have to go on vacation, I probably would have lived and maybe unified the desert. Who knows? Probably not. But it would have been a completely different story. Why it's depicted as guilt in the video is because it makes it a better video. And also, I was a bit guilty. It was a, it was a weird plan, you know? I, I talked to Ish about this plot. It made the most sense. And that's why Davert also died, because it made the moment that much more intense. Something way different. Bro, save 50 people? Yeah, I, I think me dying actually saved Theria in the end. Because I think a war would have happened and killed most of the Therians. I think, I think if Kaz is here, you can vouch for that. Um, I'm pretty sure the Emirate and the Imamate would have attacked Theria much sooner if I was still alive, rather than if I died. I don't know if any Therian is here can vouch for that. I feel like that would that's what would have happened. Opinion on Jovial? Jovial's awesome. Rip Sultanate, rip Bozo. The, the, the assassination plan worked. Let's go! Yeah, we would have gotten clapped. I don't think we would have gotten clapped. I think we honestly would have won, because you also would have had, like, planes and jungle as allies. But th a lot more Therians would have died, because it would have been on home territory. Angry about the death of his brother I thought it was for the funnies. It was for the funnies. I mean, I had to go on vacation, but I, when, when I killed myself, I was like, Hey, you know, my last thought was, you know what would be really funny? If I jumped off this tower. And so I did. I jumped off the tower. That was all real. I did jump off the tower. I mean, we did have support of jungle peeps, though. Maybe we could have won. You yeah, know, I'm pretty sure we would have won because we would have also had Pandarus and UPS back us up. But it would have been like Aculon versus Sultan versus in the desert. So it would have been much different. And killed the Sultan's right, well, Why help. Sultan didn't well, realize Zamto was helping Davrit? Because we were sneaky about it. We we had a really good plan and it worked. An act of revenge. All of a sudden, within the span of a few minutes, storming hell, F, and F's in the chat. Were all dead. Best Both point of the, the video. And were was Aculon and Sultan and allies? And the yes, they were. Was in a state of total confusion. Now, because the Sultanate didn't have a solid line of succession, there was a short power struggle that was a political the Sultanate thing? getting completely dissolved. On day nine, the second most powerful nation in the world had fallen, and most All of the, of the plan, citizens baby. ended up fleeing. That being said, it wasn't totally the F. end. Some who were still loyal to the late Sultan decided to form their own militias, whose only goal was to track down Zamta and avenge the Sultan. We are called by our divine leader to kill the dirty traitor, mashallah. Theria, on the other hand, didn't dissolve and instead elected a new leader, a player named Jophiel, who was... So, in the real event, uh, Jophiel wasn't the leader after me. There was a player named uh, Fluxion who uh, was elected leader before Jophiel, but Fluxion couldn't play the entire time, so... Uh, gave the leadership to Jophiel, and Jophiel was elected. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, shout out to Flexion, or Speed Demon on Discord. He's goaded. Well liked and trusted in the community. Still, the people of Theria would continue to live in a state of fear, afraid Jophiel they would be invaded L. <laughs> by one of the new desert militias. Also, they would never find out why their founder Saps jumped off the Therian Tower. It's always so funny from this perspective. Because of guilt. So guilty. After he saw no, die, not vacation. Extremely guilty, and I was so ashamed. Theria, and he felt too ashamed yeah, knowing so that he would be responsible. It was only thanks to Zamta that the invasion didn't happen. Jophiel way too peaceful. That's true. Jophiel was really desert, peaceful. But the whole world, many nations went on lockdown. If Flux was our leader, we wouldn't have been hated. Um, that's a that's a maybe maybe. I think we were still would have been hated, because they hated me as well. You know, it wasn't just you can never be too peaceful in a harsh world. That's how I feel. I mean, that's why I made the assassination plan. 
Allies. Emperor Alanilo had always admired Sultan Storming Hell's strong If you could do this all over again, what would you do? The exact same thing, baby. I had to rid the desert of tyranny and make it unified. That was my goal. Authoritarian leadership. So after the lockdown, Alanilo sent his Hell, diplomats to the desert hyphen. to offer support to the Sultan. Seth Hyphen kind of based. W At the same Seth time, on the Plains Island, Drip Chicken of Los Pollos Hermanos was watching the desert from afar, and he was worried about these rumored desert militias. Because Drip Chicken Most was people from hated the there desert, just a joke he was field. able That's to fair. educate his customers in Plains about the politics of the desert, and after Saps' death, he encouraged Sidefall to send diplomats to Theria quickly, and Sidefall did just that. On day nine so, um, Sidefall made alliances with Theria behind the scenes before I died. So I made the alliance with Sidefall. Uh, just wanted to point that out. And Theria officially joined Seth and all the Plains nations in So the would you jump off a tower again? Yeah, I think the, the I think jumping off the tower is mad funny. I think it, <laughs> if I have to go on vacation again, I jump off the tower. It was it was funny and it made everyone shocked. Everyone was like how the hell did this happen? It was really funny. Contract. I think Theria was the best looking civilization in the entire experiment, too. When Sap died, it literally made me jump. Glory to Theria. Yeah, can we get some glory to Theria in and the chat? What originally started as a simple glory to Theria, agreement baby. between Seth and Sidefall had now turned into a worldwide alliance called the Alliance of Democratic Nations, or put simply, the Allies. Okay, ish. You didn't have to make it like a World War II reference. If it would have been way more interesting if the Sultan the survived and you Abulon didn't jump Empire off, continue. the Sultan would never would have never survived. Um, that's the main thing. The desert, the the Sultan was destined to die. There was a lot of other assassination attempts before ours, but ours was the most um, unique and also like most well thought out. So our ours worked. Continue to their daily routines. The highest ranking officials of the Because Empire you know the Sultan was hated. He, he, he wasn't not liked at all. A lot of people wanted him dead. Facing. Even the in Akula other nations Empire they wanted him dead. He's always been the most powerful nation in the world, and it still technically is, but when adding together the populations of all the states in the democratic nations. Wait, let's just show our let's show Artharian some love. Let's shout them out. Ivy, Nolando, K4 Lit, Braven. Um, I don't know the person behind that. Uh, Riker, Rotation, Jesus the Savior. Jesus the Savior is from the, uh, f Jesus is from, uh, Theria. Jesus, <laughs> Therian based. Joe Feel underscore, obviously. Faulty Default, Goaded, 100 Cake. Chook, 100. Kazington. The states in the Democratic Nations Alliance, it is the allies that have more people overall. This made Aculon officials extremely worried. They saw this as the first legitimate threat to the regime. Glory to Theria. Glory to Theria, baby. Agreed with this view, but at the moment, his attention was on another problem entirely. The problem known as a freaking turkey. A freaking turkey's rise to popularity had always bothered Alanilo, but now this conflict was at an absolute breaking point because yesterday one of Alanilo's spies caught a freaking turkey helping snow citizens. The Axis for the, is the allies, yeah, they, that was basically what it was. It was crazy. Against Aculon Law. Alanilo Spy also saw a freaking turkey hanging out with not just Sidefall, but nearly all the major planes leaders, which made Alanilo think. Is a freaking turkey planning something? Is he secretly working with the allies? Is he about to orchestrate a full-scale revolution or an invasion of the Aculon Empire? These were all Theory the made the video even more intense. With. Yes, and that the was the goal. It, the more he convinced um, the assassination plan and Theria existing instead of just being under one sultanate empire was to make the desert more intense and honestly i think it worked i think the desert story was the best story in the entire thing i think most people who played the event would agree with me it's himself that a freaking turkey was probably committing some sort funny of funny if he was leader and needed what to be stopped oh. 
Funny Yesterday, would be a terrible leader. Turkey had reached Cringe. out to Alanilo for a meeting, and today Alanilo <laughs> accepted this request, but with a few conditions. I can this be Russia. This That's kind of true. At the Aculon Castle, two Turkey comes alone, and three the meeting takes place not today but tomorrow because Alanilo needed some extra time for his builders to finish a certain project located on the top of the Aculon Castle. Nobody knew why or what State the strange-looking tower was, but Alanilo insisted it be completed by the time Turkey shows up. Planes is the most plain story. Yeah, it was very boring in planes. Jungle was chaos. Uh, snow was like... So snow is cool, ready. but also like kind of boring at the same the day, time because it was just one empire and then desert had like cool politics. With both the desert militias and with the sea people in the jungle. Alanilo appreciated the sea people. Funny skeleton, what will you do as leader? And he promised to Please answer. stop the chaos He's in the jungle you. and help them catch their number one most wanted criminal. We need a Theria video, the Saps? I, I cannot make a Theria video. It would, I don't have any of the footage. I didn't record. Or I, I don't have any. I only have. decided to turn himself uh, in I don't have any there is basically my home state of He's Arizona <laughs> a guilty conscience perhaps. desert is best by far so true what if the other islands wanted to start the funny German army uh, that would have been interesting snow equals Soviet that's true all right Wazik I uh, understand you have a prepared statement you may now read your final words Yes, thank you. Okay, so his final speech, all scripted, didn't happen. He also killed himself, or he also wanted to get executed because, I quote, I was bored of this event. That's what Wazak said. He was bored and didn't want to play anymore. So that's why he died. Hello, everyone. Still kind of the goat, Wazak. though. He's kind of based. In the beginning, I wanted to rule the world. But I've made some bad decisions. And now... It's my time to go. You killed okay. innocents. If there's one thing I've learned, is that time can never be your trusted friend. It literally makes no sense in this context. Yeah. That time can never be your trusted friend. I don't know why he added that. It was like, oh yeah, it's the name of the last song. But I don't know, whatever. Scripted scene real. D Dwazik's a W, but I mean, scripted. He wanted to die and he said he was bored. This all happened though. I mean, like he did get punched off. After deciding, I'm pretty sure in the actual event he had to do. He had to get punched off twice because the first time he punched off, someone placed a water bucket, and he fell in the water. Wait, so you're telling me Darbo got off scot free even though he's an accomplice? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Darbo got off scot free. Being a criminal in hiding isn't how he wanted to live. Wazik instead chose to face his inevitable. I don't know how Darbo survived, terms, but he did. And by doing so, he gave the jungle one last moment of unity. Anyone else jumping? The conflict between the two major jungle tribes was still unresolved, especially now that they were in opposing alliances. But for this brief moment, there was peace in the jungle. Well, that was fun. Everyone's coming down the tree now. Most nations around the world took the end of day 9 to rest and reflect on how far they've come. For example, the Jungle's Blue Cross tribe celebrated becoming international with at least one chair. So Blue Cross, the uh, like the refugee area that like gave food out to people, always international. There was a Blue Cross place in Theria. There was a Blue Cross place in Snow. There was a Blue Cross place in Plains. Blue Cross everywhere. It was very cool. Uh, they were based. They actually, uh, one of the Blue Cross members sacrificed himself, um, and uh, died to a creeper, saving Jofiel on, like, day two. Very cool. They're very based. Security location on each island. Meanwhile, in the desert, the two Sultanate militias held a funeral for the late Sultan, where they vowed to get revenge and chanted death to Theria, after which they death to Theria. proceeded to finish building the Sultan's Such a silly saying. City Very funny, though. Honor. Meme. Theria, on the other hand, expanded its reach into the arts and became the first civilization to develop music. <laughs> oh. Get Rickrolled. 
Lastly, on the Plains Island, businesses were booming and civilizations were thriving. On day 9, the Plains Island had finished the construction of the Ish, the international... Can you guys all do me a favor and say, fuck you... Funny skeleton in the chat, thank you. State Highway, which made trade and transportation between the major Plains nations much faster. Overall, the building and architecture and player creativity in Plains was simply amazing. And it was all made possible by the political stability of the Plains Island. Many in the desert and jungle and snow looked at Plains as the shining beacon that they can aspire to be like one day yeah planes is awesome fuck you funny skeleton as the end of the day he's my watched, friend and he deserves a fuck you returned to the plains tavern after spending the day Skelly traveling bone. around the yeah, world yeah funny bonehead as his the jungle, ign the deserts and of course the plains island during many of his visits, he was very surprised when he found out that most people from these foreign nations not only knew about him, but admired him. This was because rumor had spread about his disobedience Uh-oh, they're looking up at the tower, I wonder why. ...to Alanulo, and as a result... Everyone say, I love you, funny skeleton. ...worldwide reputation as the savior of refugees, the honorable rebel, the man who stood up to the emperor, and everywhere a freaking turkey went, he was welcomed with open arms. By the way, I think it would have been perfect for that. Yeah, I heard there was a comedy Stop flirting with my chat. Me over. When it came to the Aculon Empire, the truth was, a freaking turkey had no intention of causing any type of uprising or revolution. In fact, he was strictly against the idea, knowing just how devastating a major war would be. But he did want change in the Empire. Look how nice these guys are. Such a nice community I have. Seen what freedom and Can you be my dad? Alright, like. <laughs> yo, yo, chill. To regret his more tyrannical actions in the early days, and he now envisioned a reformed Aculon Empire. His new dream was to bring democracy to snow, bring freedom to the people of the Aculon Empire, and make the snow refugees feel safe to come back home. I'm stealing I your might viewers. Just be Damn. Optimistic, but I think we can achieve world you, peace. If you want to just you, okay. go live, funny skeleton. Freaking Turkey is able to convince Alanilo to convert the empire from a tyrannical dictatorship into a Third free dad. democracy, and then the Aculon Empire ends up joining the Allies. Then world peace wouldn't just be a far-fetched idea for wishful thinkers; it would actually happen. With this massive goal in mind, a freaking turkey prepared for tomorrow for his big meeting with Alanulo. Just remember everything we talked about. We'll be watching. Before a freaking turkey took off for the snow island, he had met with the four major planes leaders one last time to tell them what he hopes to achieve in his upcoming talk with Alanulo. The Plains leaders were pessimistic. See, when they heard about Alanulo's strict conditions for the meeting to take place, they suspected that this was going to be the meeting where Alanulo removes Turkey from his second-in-command position, or worse, puts Turkey in Aculon's prison. This prison did not exist. Whatever happens today, the Saps, did you play the new Minecraft 1.20 update? I did. I have a... SMP going on with my uh, friends that we just started today for the 1.20 update. It's pretty fun. We ha I haven't done any of the new stuff really. Um, there's a cherry bot uh, tree. There's a cherry tree biome. I don't know what it's called. Cherry blossom. And that was basically it. I mean, it's just like a regular Minecraft event uh, thing. The armor trims are awesome, though. I think they're really cool. As the full support of the allied nations, even if they can't attend the meeting, they will be watching and will do whatever they can to help him. Dad, my phone is about go. to go Turkey's dead and I'm going to have to leave. On the snow Rip. Don't say I think he's going to the meeting Dad. right away. 
Can I join your SMP? Oh, I probably, I should, I probably shouldn't have said it. Uh, no, I cannot let you guys join the SMP. I'm sorry. It's for my IRL friends. So the people I'm friends with in real life are playing it right now. But if I need you guys to come on to cause havoc, I'll make a community announcement, and you guys can. But for now, because it's day one, you guys cannot. I'm sorry. This is weird. Turkey's been at the castle for like a few minutes now, and a lot of people is nowhere to be seen. Do a little oh, trolling here. video on your SP. After this, uh, after the, after the video's over, I could go on the SP for a bit. I'll do a bit. Of, I'll do a little bit of trolling. Here we go. Everyone's here now. I, I think everyone's here it's... now. Knights come to the castle. September 11th, do a little trolling? No, 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 no. no. Not September 11th, do a little trolling. Hey. We don't jump off towers in real life. We don't hit towers in real life. It's only in Minecraft. All barons, Duke, Turkey, and fellow knights have now come together to speak with Emperor Alanilo. Alanilo, would you please start the conversation? Wait, wait, wait. Turkey, hold up. Um, so before we begin, sorry, I sorry to interrupt. Um, I have a special thing I want to do real quick. Wait, wait, so wait. Here. Drew, not yet. I I want to do something first. Uh, Turkey, can you sit on the throne for a second? Do you have a Twitch? I do have a Twitch, uh, but I don't think I'm going to use it. Just, I have a lot more subs here now because of the video. <laughs> but it is, I can put oh it in God. chat. It's happening. Can I trust you, Turkey? Yeah. There you go. I put it in you chat. Like this, right? Yeah, Sitting I mean, on the throne. You put me on here. I, I don't know what you're talking I, about. I, you guys I'm don't don't people. follow that. I mean, I don't really use it ever. I'm live streaming here. Oh, Twitch sucks. I, what are you getting I, on about? I know that you've colluded with the Plains Alliance. <laughs> YouTube better? Yeah, YouTube better. I mean, like I have I have like forty subscribers or whoa, forty whoa, like whoa, followers whoa, 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 on Twitch whoa, whoa, whoa. and like you can do at this point six hundred here. Uh, so like I don't, I don't really. Think. Uh, I'm gonna get into this in a second. No! I'll go back to the video. Yes, I've talked with planes. I've also talked with desert and jungle. Just let it play out. Diplomat. Dip my balls in your mouth. <laughs> Got him. Allies. The moment we turn this place into an actual democracy. So, it's absolutely telling me 9/11 was actually in Minecraft. 9/11 was not in Minecraft. My what? <laughs> was there a 9/11 experiment? They thought you were going to kill them, mm -hmm. and to be honest, so did I. So that's the point of this meeting. Di uh, you know, hub com Oh, I need a Discord community. You know what? That's true. How about I just leave? Uh, I don't have a Discord community. But um, my Discord just is just Saparata. Because I am cool and I have that name. Do you, If you want to chat there, you can yeah. just add and my Discord. With an army. Don't I'm tell sorry, anyone, though. Team. I don't want my DM spammed. Okay. This didn't happen. None of the throne scene happened. Um, what actually happened was... Turkey and Alanilo had their falling out like that. And Alanilo ended up just uh, killing Turkey with a sword. Along with all the knights killing a lot of other people. Like Endy, or not Endy, <laughs> Ender, Bernie, Soggy, uh, Spider. All of A lot of people died. And... But there's a whole argument about, like, if it was RDM, which means uh, random killing. Um, and what ended up happening was that Ender, Turkey, Bernie all got... No, not Turkey. Ender, Bernie, Soggy all got revived. And Turkey stayed dead for video purposes. And that's why this is so cinematic. Because Turkey was an important character. I'm an animator with five subs because I don't know how to get more views. Um, I don't did i mean like i got really lucky i got in this event and i got like people who knew who i was and i got like i had like 70 subscribers and now i have like 600 it's crazy ish 2 has a video on the fake parts of the video yes he made a fake parts of the video yeah
Rip turkey, though. He got cooked like a turkey, I guess. Rip. Wait, they're killing Turkey's supporters. They're hunting down his supporters as well. This is crazy. Like that, there was a purge on the snow island, and many of Turkey's supporters were killed. The few who were able to escape immediately swam to the other islands to tell everyone exactly what happened. And all of the cat in background. Oh, did you hear my cat? It meowed, yeah. Meow. They assassinated some of the most loved members of Akalon. When a freaking turkey's death I message turkey appeared in chat, like dogs. people around the yeah, world turkey were got outraged. Cooked. And shortly after, the turkey, of the they, they had to get turkey off the menu for Thanksgiving or whatever. I don't know. Turkey once visited Los Boyos Hermanos. I'm giving the army chicken for 50% off to make sure they're ready for battle. Meanwhile, Alanulo got word that the allies were preparing their armies, so he declared a full lockdown, reached out to his own allies, and called them to the Aculon castle to be ready in case the allies declare war. All right, bye, Seth. Sure I'm going to sleep. Good night, man. Thank you for Syria tuning into the stream. Seth, You're a real one. Votes was unanimous. On day 10, the Don't say guess. No, I'm not saying guess what, because I know you're going to say chicken butt, because drip chicken's on screen. On the Aculon Empire. Do we have my newborn king inside? Oh, that's not what I thought was gonna happen. Holy shit. Wow, you like completely threw me off guard. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy fuck, I didn't even see that coming. Oh crap, my phone's on 1%? You should probably plug in your phone and take a time a break. You don't have to... <laughs> you don't have to... Um, you don't have to chill here. You can plug in your phone. You don't have to watch. The, the video's almost over. Thank you for tuning in if you're gonna leave. Uh, I don't know why Oxygen Devourer 69 said that. You really caught me off guard there. I'm gonna click the button to the video now. Great success. Hopefully we all see some of you tomorrow to sign the constitution of the new Aculon Republic. I don't even know what to say. Rip to your newborn having. kittens, I guess. Thank you. Thank you all. This isn't about us. This isn't about our lives. W Jesus from the Belize scene? Yeah, Jesus is a W. All the allied nations met up at the center island so they could attack the snow island together. Today, we fight for revenge. We fight for freedom. Midnight Star is goaded. That's the guy with the voice that right there. He's so cool. Set a trap. The Aculon yeah, alright. <laughs> Guys, let's not be cringe in the chat. Let's not say weird shit. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't have any mods because this is my first stream. Or second stream. First stream. Had it taken inspiration from history and <clears throat> created what they called the Emirate the and the Emirate Ban Jesus? Yes, they the did. The most advanced defensive tower in the world, complete with dangerous height, sturdy walls, arrow slits, and lava cover. <laughs> this is this is crazy. So obviously, if you've watched the other ish videos that this is a reference to the wooden fence in State Season 1, which Alanilo also built. Uh, it's cool that he built that and, and then built it again. Don't put me in timeout. I'm not putting you in timeout. Just don't be weird. They're here. <laughs> Iron Torch got less kills than the Aculan Knights. Oh, yeah. Bam, bam, bam. Kind of a goaded song. Not as good as Ode in the prison video, though. I don't even know how to time someone out. Can I do that? I can't. 
This is really cool. All the desert people up here are 2E, 2G, the Emirate, and the Imamet. Uh, we missed it. We missed their introduction. Uh, the desert militias uh, were WeedyOZ, uh, EJK. I want to shout out King as well. Uh, XXKXNG. Very cool guy. Um... NDJK, all desert called desert militias. Actual names with the Imamet and the Emirate. Very cool. Whole story got sidetracked. You should watch EJK's video, uh, even if it's very biased. It's Senior shots of Akilin look so good. Yeah, Akilin was really cool. Rip Zamta, he was a real one. Chuk also kind of a goat. If you see every chat that he goes to says Death Etheria because everyone's spamming it. The main battle is actually on the ground versus the Akula Knights, who are the best people using the server. All got like 20 kills each. Yeah, the Akula Knights are crazy. Gets bleeped by D best. He really is D best. Rest in peace, Alanilo. That actually did happen in the video. He missed his water bucket. Hello, Smolk. Welcome to the stream. I hope I said your name right. We're almost done though, unfortunately. The video is almost over. You can go back and watch it if you're curious and my perspective. Like that, there was a purge on the snow island, but this time it was the Storming Hell is like the only leader who hasn't died to fall damage. The killing. Uh, probably. <laughs> he keeps dying to his sword, though. After a while, the allies had completely taken over the Iron Torch, and all the Aculon forces had either been killed or had fled the island and gone into hiding. And with that, the Alliance of Democratic Nations had defeated the Aculon Empire. It was only when the war ended and the clouds parted that the allies were finally able Rip to British reflect shrimp. on what they had done. They had succeeded, but they had also shown no mercy. Kind of wish you showed the post-war battles. The there we go. Yeah, I'll talk about it right now. So, I mean, after the Elanilo died, it basically, in the video, Ish goes, and then they surrendered. That's not what happened. A lot, it, there was a lot of infighting. The Emirate and the Imamet got revenge on and killed Zamta in the actual thing. And there was a lot of uh, just 
skirmishes and fights between smaller nations and like people going around it didn't end immediately and everyone was like oh we're peaceful now that's not what happened they continued to be ruthless and thirsty for blood it was as if they had become their enemy as the allies each safely returned to their homes now with a clear mind many of them felt regret Neither side was completely innocent, and the war was complicated. But at least it was over. And the Allies had won. Over the next few days, the people of Plains, Faria, Seth, and a few smaller nations created a world alliance with a massive um. parliament building on the <laughs> island. Uh, there was never a world alliance. This, from this point on in the video, it's all fake. <laughs> it's all fake, unfortunately. Um, none of this happened. It was just everyone went back to their island and then the event ended. Where world leaders met to discuss the affairs of their nations nope. and most importantly to keep the peace. Nope. And the first order of business was pardoning the few living players who fought for Babylon so they didn't have to live in hiding. That was the same tunnel I was in. Meanwhile, the snow refugees were able to move back to the snow island and <laughs> sorry that I make your ears go pop. Republic, Oops. putting democracy in snow. They also tore down the remains of the iron torch I wanted a war. and put in its place. Yeah, that's a that was about Solev in 7-Eleven? Oh, I can. Um, so Solev, instead of being in the event this time and ruling a snow nation, uh, was this event staff. He staffed and helped around and spectated for Ish. Um, Solev made a 7-Eleven, I think, like, in the middle of a biome, and then, uh, went around with a group of half-staff, half-good PvPers and killed a lot of people after the Aculon War. A lot of the people in the actual war also had 7-Eleven shields. Honoring all who died in the Battle of Aculon. And overlooking the graveyard was the man. Or this didn't happen. There is no graveyard. There is no turkey statue. And so the jungle went back to hosting. There's Darbo. He the survived. Went back to pursuing the arts. Goated, Metez, Fluxion, Faulty Default, Downferno, a Brazorf. Uh, Tan, uh, Monstagal, Braven, all these people, awesome people. Love my Therians, baby. And Drift Chicken went back to Don't forget about the Netherite the armor. There was Netherite armor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who cares? No, no, no one had it because it was so rare. The but also the, the admins had it at the end, I think that's what you're referring to. Finally settling down. Yeah, I forgot you can make a statue like that in survival. Yeah. <laughs> the new found peace allowed for new stories to begin. Uh, casual other state references. But for us, Legacy, the goat. It's a good place to end. A lot of places did full nether it. Yeah, because Pandaris had it. Good video. Best video. A lot of people love that video. Ah, oh, great video. All right, that was it. Uh, feel free to ask any more questions before I start wrapping up this stream. Uh, I hope this other screen works. That'd be pretty nice. Did you like being a personal guard for Solo in the prison video? I did. I think I had the most fun of 
a lot of people in the prison. Most people who were prisoners and lower level guards didn't have fun. Uh, I did. I had a ton of fun in the prison event. It was awesome. I ate the Statue of Liberty. W video. Uh, I, I stopped eating all the national monuments. My potato PC with one RAM wouldn't can, couldn't handle the event. That's probably true. You need a pretty. It, it's like not bad. It's like normal Minecraft server, but like sometimes it gets really bad. So. Boom, boom, boom. Glory to Theria. Glory to Theria. Best, best place ever. Love Theria. Glory to Theria, baby. W Theria. W stream. Thank you, thank you. First stream, a little scuffed. Oh well. I think it went well. I don't even know how many viewers I have. Hope it was good. Do I watch Magicum? Yeah, I watch Magicum. Magicum's great. Who came up with the name of it for Theria? It was a combination of both me and Jofiel and uh, Flexion. We all decided Theria was a good name because it meant democracy and we wanted our build style to be Greek. Hold up. You guys see this? You're using a higher version? Oh shoot. Um, one second. Inter intermission. I was using 1.20. Bye. Are you leaving? Have a good rest of your night, man. I'm probably gonna end in a little bit. So you're not missing much. No. <laughs> the wolf has been streaming for two hours. That's a long time. Bum, 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 bum. Did you guys see Magicum kill Solo in the prison video? Yes, of course. I was there. Alright, I'm gonna go now. See you, man. Have a good rest of your stream. Or fucking night. Shut up. W music, though? Thank you. Um, is Funny Skeleton still here? Funny skeleton. <laughs> Yo, you're here. You know, you know what time it is. Come on. Come on. crystal oh no come on say yes all right hold up i'm gonna call him on discord um 
This won't be too long. I'm, I'm not gonna continue streaming for a long time. Hello? I, I hate you so much. Oh my god, no way. Can you guys hear him? I'm pretty sure you guys can hear him. There's not a lot of people any here anymore. All the active people left. Time to get rolled in PvP Legacy a couple times, and then I end stream. Got him. Kind of. Oh no, you guys are all here. Hello. Hello. We're playing some PvP Legacy. Feel free to log on if you guys want. I don't know if you guys play. What's up? What is this kit? I'm gonna make this chat quiet. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know how to W snap stream. True. Bye. Oh, there's a slow falling potion. Uh oh. Uh oh. No. 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 <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. 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 Was a fishing rod? That's not gonna help me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you on? What's your name again? Kazington. Oh my god, look guys! That guy from the state video. Oh wait. I don't have any kits. Wait, this building ones. <laughs> oh. oh no! Oh no! You guys, oh, you guys no. ready? Don't worry, I'm lagging a little bit. Good. What? The oh no! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> You have COVID? Yeah. Damn. I didn't even know COVID was the thing. Um, oh, you're... You're fighting a sick man. Oh, no. You thought. God, I hate you. Stop running. Stop running! No, no. no go away. Stop running for me! <laughs> no. What's up, Caliper? Or no, Larry? You're so cringe. You're a nerd. You're a nerd. No. Bro, you're getting trash in front of like seven people. Seven people. <laughs> I wonder what was my max. I actually couldn't see it half the time. I think your max was like 13. 13? That's not bad. I would have probably gotten more if I didn't have to end stream. <laughs> Bro, this is the guy who's losing to me in PvP Legacy. I'm the guy who jumped off the tower. Oh, do you guys hear my keyboard? That makes sense. I'm sorry. I have, I have bad mic. W stream. Thank you. Oh, I'm getting better. Bro, I'm looking over at chat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm God. reading chat in front of you. Yeah, keep talking to him. Keep talking to him. Oh, no. Go away, go away. Alright, time to focus up. No, talk to chat. Alright, 
rein. If Saps wins Arizona, will not be what? Oh, if Saps wins Arizona, will not be 150 degrees. Whoa. Maybe I'll lose by purpose. Bye, Saps. All right, have a good night, man. Focusing, you know. <laughs> you still did it tonight. Oh my god. Alright, ready? Watch this. No, not server. Uh, custom news. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how to play Ew. this. Ew. Are you guys ready for some riveting crystal gameplay? Not even doing it right. I mean, I'm making a, a civilization video right now. Oh my god, fireball. <laughs> no! Bro thought, bro thought. Go away. Oh. Bro, you're so bad at that. Commenting, I am playing Fall Guys and watching. You're good, man. You don't have to comment. Did you have a good? Do you think it was a good stream? Thanks. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. I did so much more damage to myself. I was in third person. PvP Legacy is not it. <laughs> yeah, Alright, I think I'm gonna end. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today I am. <laughs> today, uh, we're gonna watch a fake video. Oh. Alright, yeah, I think I'm gonna end. Oh my god, is that. I'm muting you now, they can't hear you. Alright, uh, thanks for watching everyone who's still here. Have a good rest of your night, guys. Bye bye It's not there yet on the screen.